Hi, I'm Jesse England. Several weeks ago, I publicized some images I drew from memory of a video game I played once in middle school in the hopes that someone would recognize it. A few years ago, I went looking for this game but could not find it referenced anywhere online. Even though I received a very positive response to my call, it seemed that no one remembered the game. It could not be found in any vaporware sites or any other video game archives. Eventually, I thought to look for it by searching for a particular set of terms. I found it referenced within a software advisory document for a school district made in 1991. The game was not available for download, but I ordered a physical copy. It's called Research Paper Writer. The hijacking scenario was part of a larger language arts lesson on learning how to write a research paper, which included simulated interviews with hostages and terrorism experts. I've already looked through a little bit of the game, and I did remember some events correctly. But through what little I've read of the interviews, it appears that the game ended much more differently than what I recalled. Now, for the first time in about 20 years, let's play Research Paper Writer. Hi Jesse, have you ever used this program? Let's click no, so that it'll give me the clean run through. Welcome Jesse, we'll be opening a records folder named Jesse England to keep track of your progress. Good luck. As we see, the hijacking was only part of a larger lesson. Uh, interview sources, library data search, writing and reading center, I don't know where to go. But what we're interested in looking at is hijacking of Flight 102. Welcome to Orville Airport, Jesse. Flight 102 will be boarding momentarily. Click the continue box when you're ready. You pass through the metal detector and down the loading corridor. It's like a mix between a Galaxy and a DC-10. Okay, there's a button that says wait. Oh, there we go. You take your seat and ponder whether or not you should do some work. You're a writer, Jesse, and a writer's work is never done. You look out the porthole window across the aisle and see something very weird. Click continue and then watch. Hmm. These military types march out onto the tarmac and stand at attention as if on some sort of mission. So Jesse, do you think this is suspicious or what? Maybe it's time to pull down a note card and start recording, huh? Shot notes. Suspicious types on tarmac. Yeah, I definitely remember them chiding me to start writing. You fiddle with your seatbelt. Somebody awfully large used it last time, so you cinch yourself down. When you look up, you notice that a woman dressed in a combat infantry outfit has taken the seat across the aisle. Your plane taxis down the runway. And thunder skyward. Continue. As you climb above the clouds, you admire a blazing sunset out the cabin window. You lean over the seat to take a closer look. Soon it will be dark. Your plane is speeding to its destination. Everything seems very normal, and you begin to feel a bit drowsy. Oh wow, it's going right off the page. Yeah, this was definitely adapted, um, taken directly from an older version. You doze off for a moment. You awaken in darkness. I don't remember this being at night. From your seat, you can get 
Brief glimpses of the cockpit when flight attendants open the cabin door. Suddenly, someone hurried... Oh, I missed it. Someone hurried up. The captain snaps around. We are soldiers from the revolution and you are our prisoners, says an armed hijacker. You watch in horror. A hijacker leaps from her seat across the aisle, brandishing an automatic weapon. She looks out over a cabin of tense passengers. Another hijacker appears from the bathroom. I do not remember her. You close your eyes, hoping this is a dream. The hijacker jams a clip into her gun. The cabin is deathly silent. One foolish move by anyone, and you all could die. You feel this horrible, nauseous knot in your stomach and feel your breath coming in frightened pants. The first hijacker emerges from the cockpit. Okay, I do not remember him resembling Che Guevara. You're in big trouble, Jesse. Very big trouble. Wow. I do not remember his face. You feel a gun pressed against... God. And gasp. Okay, I was in seventh grade when I first played through this. You feel this extraordinary paralysis similar to one of those strange nightmares where you try to run but can't move. You realize fully now the meaning of being taken hostage, Jesse, inescapably trapped in the sky. He pulls his gun away and strides back into the cabin. Then we fly without incident until... The plane surges, you hear muffled gasps, then you feel it lift and change course. A ferocious looking hijacker storms up the aisle and roars, resist and you die. God. He grabs a passenger by the throat and yanks her from the seat. Obey or I shoot, he growls. You speed through the night sky waiting for the next awful surprise. Everyone is quiet now, resting alone with their thoughts and fears as the hijack leaders pressure the captain in the cockpit. I think I know what's coming up next. You close your eyes and try to imagine something peaceful to ease your mind. You remember when you were a child and used to swim with your friends in the warm, gentle waters of Sunny Pond. You doze, exhausted by tension. You awaken abruptly, sensing danger. The cockpit door opens, and one of the hijackers enters. Now's your chance. You can dash into the cockpit and grab the hijacker's gun. Two, pull down the throttle lever. Three, flick the flap lever. Or four, or maybe you don't dare. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did in seventh grade and click don't, don't dare. Click number four. Instead, the captain seizes the opportunity and jams the throttle forward. Suddenly, the plane is thrown into a violent dive. You can't move. Your body is pinned to the cockpit wall. The plane vibrates wildly as it plunges downward across the sky and the menu. Some of the people scream for a moment. One of the hijackers is thrown against you, smashing you against the wall. The plane rolls over. You hang dizzily upside down. Then, except for the scream of the engines, the plane is deathly silent. You wait, pinned against the wall, the force of the spin accentuating what seems like a childhood nightmare. You feel a sense of peace, an odd sensation of, release, of relief, as if some immense obligation has been lifted from you. Your mind forms a picture of a gentle pond creased by a gentle whisper of wind. The strange serenity is interrupted by an easing of the spin. Your body tenses and you gasp. This is it, you think. You say a little prayer for your family and close your eyes tight, ready to accept the impact. Your life seems to have been very short, yet very, very long and tiring. You feel the hijacker pressed against you stir and groan miserably. You feel a sense of kinship and sadness in your final shared moments and are glad you aren't alone. But now the plane is recovering. The power of the engines lifts you, and you feel 
both elated and that odd serenity receding. You hear a sprinkling of cheers, then everyone claps for the captain. You struggle into your seat, turn and notice one of the hijackers kneeling beside the cockpit door. She groans. You can see that she's injured. Blood oozes from her cheek and arm. Why us, you ask. She groans but doesn't answer. You wait a few moments, then ask, Why have you done this? Why are you doing this to us? We are all soldiers, she says. You would not understand. Your weapons have killed our children, my children. You ask her, Your own children? Yours? The hijacker, My own, my son of three years, my daughter of four. The hijacker, we have all lost children, to your weapons. You reply quickly, we didn't kill your children, it wasn't us, we're just innocent people. The hijacker groans, and my children, they are not innocent. The hijackers regroup as the plane cruises quietly again. Two of them crowd into the cabin and you hear muffled shouts. You feel the plane descending. And finally, the sweet bump of pavement. We taxi. Now we wait again. Everyone is very nervous. The hijacker's pace is the captain negotiates. It feels reassuring to be on the ground, but if the authorities don't strike a deal, you might take off again. Dawn, negotiations drag on. You wish they would hurry. The hijackers are increasingly agitated. You feel increasingly more angry. We wait. We go now to new plane, a hijacker announces. Hands in the air. Silence. Quick we go, roars the head hijacker. Wrong moves and she dies. Instead, everyone stands, our hands raised, then we follow him down the ramp. We are coming, roars the head hijacker, raising his gun. Suddenly the hijackers open fire and sharpshooters fire back. We hurry down the ramp in shock. Ambulances, TV trucks, and FBI agents rush to the plane. Miraculously, no passengers were seriously injured, a reporter says excitedly. One hijacker died and two were injured. The reporter continues, An injured female hijacker is being loaded into the ambulance. We don't yet know who fired first or why, but we'll have that for you soon. And now, back to you, Jack, reporting live. This is Amy Williams from TV6 Eyewitness News. You're safe, Jesse, as are all the passengers. You made it, Jesse, but you won't rest easily until you understand more about events like this one. Fortunately, we can help. All right. So, what did I remember right, and what did I remember incorrectly? So I did remember correctly that the exhaust was animated and that flight was involved in the title. It seems that I remembered the control tower and the large windows and being chided to write. Uh, I did not remember correctly that the hijackers appeared in a jeep, but they did appear uh, sort of marching out of the terminal. The hijacking didn't take place on the ground, but once the plane was in the air, I must have had a sort of composite memory of two different 
uh, pages of the hijacker with a gun and also the other hijacker in the cockpit, however um, positioned in a different way. In terms of the choices we were given, I seem to remember pressing do nothing, but maybe I remembered that the wrong way because I pressed do nothing and in the playthrough it was the captain that uh, seized control of the plane for a moment and knocked it off, uh, off kilter. Actually, why don't we go back and see what happens if we do press the throttle or the flaps or something. You are a fool. You nearly killed everyone, she groaned. How can you talk about danger, you ask, feeling your anger swirling in your stomach? But you know she's right and are swept by guilt and fear. You tell yourself, be calm, Jesse. Take a deep breath. Why us, you ask? Okay, now it seems to be going back into the same mode we had before.